We'll be reading every comment from my previous Borderlands 3 videos, go watch them for context if you haven't. Comments ranging from the best to the lowest of society. Yes, I'm calling you out. I believe everyone's voice should be heard, but some thoughts should really be kept to themselves. Can I also ask why this part is the most replayed? You all have some explaining to do. By the way, thank you for the support for my first Borderlands 3 video. Over 100,000 dumbasses watched it? I love my fans. If it weren't for them, I would not be here right now. Seriously though, the Borderlands community is truly the most passionate out there. Sometimes I go through Borderlands videos popping up in my recommended like analysis videos and reviews from smaller channels and it ends up being their most popular videos. They're not that good, but props to them for being seen. I suppose I made a good decision to get into a series like this, or perhaps we all have equally good taste? You may be wondering why I'm using Borderlands 2 footage. I think it's easier on the eyes. There's a beautiful simplicity to this game that can't be matched by Borderlands 3, despite 3's gameplay being objectively better. Coming back to Borderlands 2 after playing so much of 3 feels like a breath of fresh air. There isn't a mess of neon colors and blinding explosions every time I perform an action. I was even starting to get nauseous trying to get Borderlands 3 footage. Dialogue also feels way more streamlined, even though I knew exactly how the narrative went. I felt more engaged with the story than I did my first time playing Borderlands 3. While I consider my first Borderlands 3 video to be my magnum opus for now, if I could go back and change some things, I would. I didn't like how matter-of-fact I sounded, like I was trying to confirm my opinion so hard when it's as simple as my opinion, and just couldn't articulate it well. If I get any facts wrong, please call me out for it. It's my responsibility that as a creator to not mislead my audience. I will make mistakes, that is guaranteed. I'm not an expert on every subject, but if I'm passionate enough, I will do everything I can to get my facts right. I do read all my comments, even if I'm not doing it for a video, so in a way, you, the audience, also have a responsibility to not spread misinformation. Borderlands 3 is such a divisive game. Some say I was being too harsh, some say I wasn't harsh enough. I guess it shows just how much we care about the series. So let's start with my comment. Arms race is fun though. Please help my dad. He has been doing arms race ever since it launched. And I am not kidding. I cannot help your dad. I want to be like him. He still hasn't gotten a god roll plasma coil by the way. Tell him I said good luck. I'm replaying Borderlands 3 and going through the DLC I haven't touched yet. I'm loving the Krieg DLC because of you, TY. Wow, that was, uh, that was really kind of you. It, it feels like I'm actually impacting people's lives directly. The one thing I can't forgive the authors is killing Lilith and Maya and giving us Ava in return. I mean, killing Lilith and Maya? What have I ever done to deserve this? And why isn't anyone at least a little bit sympathetic for the people of Elpis? Not even Lilith or Claptrap who have been there. Crappy writing. This one got a whole lot of likes. But you seriously cannot believe that Lilith actually died. And as for the residents of Elpis, I completely forgot people live there. I guess the writers did too. Maybe I should write for Borderlands 4. Is that why every time I make a run with friends and beat the game, I have such an empty feeling in my stomach? Like all the cool characters are now either dead or completely sidelined. And who do we have left? Ava? Why? Nonetheless, Ava is annoying as hell. In my opinion, she's the worst addition of all Borderlands. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Of all the things they thought was a good idea, let's add some edgy TikTokers and an even edgier teenager to lead an army. You know, I did say at one point that I didn't mind Ava's existence, but I really do wish she was written better. Like, you can like Ava for all the three Ava fans out there, but you gotta admit that she's not well written and has no reason to be the leader for the Crimson Raiders. Like, why can't we be the leader? Why can't our main vault hunters be the leader? Considering, you know, we did all the heavy lifting. Ava is a terrible character, worse than Tina and Claptrap. Wow, people don't like Tina? Awkward. While I may not agree with some of the stuff said, I like this guy's opinion. And hey, he didn't say nothing about Ava, because I actually liked Ava in Borderlands 3. There you are, our first Ava fan. Maybe I should be more critical to the games I love, because it shows I know how much I know about- Okay, that's- what a sentence. And that I'm not completely blind to their magic. Thank you, thank you, thank you for not bashing Ava's character. 
I love you. The feeling's not mutual, buddy. I didn't really mention Ava in my first video, because I don't think I can add to the discussion of Ava. It's run down at this point. In a way, I do agree with all the sentiments about Ava, but I won't say she ruined the entire series. Most of the reception comes down to people finding her annoying, which I didn't. I can't treat how good a character is based on whether you find a character annoying or not. I found Typhon de Leon to be annoying, and I knew I was in the minority. I had to rewrite that section in my video the most, because I didn't know how to explain why I didn't like Typhon de Leon other than I just found him to be annoying, just like most people found Ava to be annoying. I can at least say that Typhon de Leon is a better written character than Ava. As someone who has loved Borderlands since the second game, this is a great video. This is great quality, man. I hope your content gets more recognition. I do too. This is just a really sweet comment. Thank you. I enjoyed the Calypso twins. Not as great as Jack, obviously, but they were obnoxious enough to give me the drive to keep going after them. They made me want to kill them. I liked the chick twin. I wish she was playable. I feel like they were trying too hard to be obviously evil and nothing more. And as soon as you saw through that, you lose your immersion and can't take it seriously. It's not like the previous titles where they blended more genuine moments into the insanity of this universe. We gotta have some contrast here. Wasn't there a point in time where we could exchange money for Iridium? Or is the paint I'm eating finally getting to me? Also, pretty sure the Alicia Keys song was a joke inclusion. Firehawk, girl on fire. Yes, very funny. Because of that alone, I do not believe the story is supposed to be taken seriously. I think you need to lay off that paint. If their intent for us was to not treat anything seriously, why should we care? Why should the player care about a character's death if nothing in the story matters? I think 3's humor was on point at the most random of times, but the story itself was really lacking. Of course, they robbed us of Scooter's death in the main games and other events that I had no clue of because I also didn't play Battle for Sanctuary as I had stopped playing Borderlands 2 by like 2015 to 2016 the latest. Well, you weren't missing out. I don't think any video game had DLC this late after a game's release. Several years after a game's release. I remember playing the Borderlands 2 Reborn mod after the DLC dropped, and the mod developers were pissed. It ruined everything. No one expected a DLC 5 plus years after the last one. The Fight for Sanctuary DLC was to hype up the next game, but I saw it as a sign of the writing getting worse. The true definition of wasted potential. This was supposed to be the event that leads us to Borderlands 3. How Sanctuary 3 gets made, Vaughn being introduced to our main cast, but more importantly, Lilith's progression to taking up Roland's mantle and becoming the new leader for the Crimson Raiders. See, the villain Hector, bet you also forgot his name, could have been the catalyst for Lilith's growth. He could have been taunting Lilith and comparing her to Roland, saying she's not qualified. That could have been the drive for her to become that leader she was meant to be. Not only that, Hector had nothing to do with the Calypso Twins, which again was more wasted potential. The Calypso Twins show up with an army of bandits and we never got to see how that formed. Um, are we really talking about story and characters in a looter shooter? This isn't a JRPG. Isn't Borderlands also part RPG? I'm sorry, but story is irrelevant in my opinion. The looting and shooting in Borderlands 3 is the best in the franchise. And at the end of the day, in a looter shooter, those are the two most important factors. I didn't even factor in the story into my Borderlands 3 review, because the story is irrelevant in looter shooters. Two people replied with the best response. This is such a weird take. A lot of people enjoyed the story in the previous games, and then suddenly Borderlands 3 comes out with an atrocious story and we're supposed to look past it because you, the arbiter of what is and is not important within video game genres, say so? So they said they made a review and didn't factor in story. Let's check it out. No videos. Subscribe to PlayStation and SJW Central. This guy doesn't stop. They're like a reoccurring villain. I'm sorry, but Borderlands 2 was trash compared to Borderlands 3. No mantling in BL2, no sliding, far less guns and gun variety, worse skill trees, only one action skill per Vault Hunter, and the shooting mechanics are just light years better in Borderlands. Wait a second. 
This is verbatim what I said in my video. Are you telling me this? Are you telling me what I said, as if you didn't get this information from me? Borderlands 3 just has so much more build variety, much better cosmetic options in Borderlands 3 as well. When you actually look at what's important, Borderlands 3 is just better. Wow, it's like we both watched the same video. Why are you telling me all this? Our heroes are back with another reply. Borderlands 3 has great gameplay, but the story is not only bad, but actively shits on the previous games. I would say Borderlands 3 has the best gameplay of the series, but I would also say it's the worst video game story I've played in the last 10 years. It isn't just bad, it's... New Star Wars bad. Someone replied to the original post? Zoomer spotted. Looks like that struck a nerve. Actually, I'm a 39 year old millennial, but nice try though. I've been playing these games since day one in 2009. Dude, you're so old, where's your wife? Go home to your family, dude. Let me see if I understand. You played these games from the start. You saw how these games progressed to what it is now, yet you completely ignore that. Can you not be compelled by a story anymore? What is going on in your life that you have to have constant action and dopamine? Maybe I wasn't clear enough. The story in Borderlands 3 is important because they prove to us in Borderlands 2 that they can write really well. If the story and characters in Borderlands 2 sucked, no one would criticize how bad Borderlands 3's story ended up. But, at the same time, Borderlands 2 would not be the masterpiece that it is. Every quest would just be doing chores if Borderlands 2 had the same writing as 3. Someday I'll finish a playthrough, and then someday I'll have to do on true Vault Hunter mode. Heck, damn. Can't I just skip to playing DLCs? Wish there was an option to just skip over the whole damn terrible main campaign. And again, our favorite guy just has to respond. I love the main campaign. Definitely the best game in terms of loot and skill trees. The original comment did not mention anything about gameplay. And they continue to respond to more comments. It's a looter shooter. Story and characters are irrelevant. That's not an excuse for horrible writing. You make the same reply to everyone that doesn't like the direction of Borderlands 3. It's like having a good story bothers you or something. Let's read from another reply and get their take. Tiny Tina's assault on Dragon's Keep. I wept like a baby at the end. Gosh, I mean, she was orphaned, probably talked into killing her parents with a grenade by themselves, picked up by the Crimson Raiders and taken in by Roland, got attached to him like he was her daddy, and clings to denial when he dies. That's some writing. There wasn't even one such moment in Borderlands 3. See, this is why I love video games. I really enjoyed the story of 3. If you genuinely enjoyed the story of Borderlands 3, that's fine, I can't change that. But please do not pursue a career in writing. Not even to spite me. The future of the industry will be grateful. I remember when I first saw Borderlands at the local video store. I never knew the game I rented because Cool Mask Guy on the box would have me captivated for 20 plus years. Sure, I never started on one, but from the moment I got my first crits in the game and saw those numbers, I was never leaving until I saw all the numbers. These are the comments I love reading. Personal anecdotes about a video game that I grew up with changing someone's life. It's like looking at my own experiences through the lens of someone else. Plays Borderlands 3 once becomes unable to hear because I muted everything to not hear the awful writing. After playing Borderlands 3, I did mute the dialogue completely, which thankfully is an option. But it left me asking what the point was. When you remove the biggest part of character interaction, you remove the goal and stop having a connection with the game you're playing. Plus another problem is that you remove all dialogue, which includes enemies, who, let's just say, have the best dialogue, and is the most fun part of fighting bandits. That lad you was playing with was an immature idiot. He called you a dickhead twice, and you was only trying to help. Me and my boys take the pits out of each other all the time, it's normal, but he rarely just called you a dickhead twice with an unnecessarily rude tone. First time, as you know, was an easy, honest mistake. You made which he didn't need to call you that, then the second time you tried and succeeded to get a second win, as he was down, but then immediately went to revive him as he was down. No way you would have known in that moment his help was gone that much, that he needed that kill that bad. He was only doing your best, and that could have happened to any of us. There is taking the pits out of each other, then there is literally just insulting someone, which is what he did to you twice. I've been studying psychology for just over 15 years now, and in my humble opinion, he was not coming at you from a good place, bro. On his part, them two digs at you was just spiteful and rude. Rude AF, but all jokes aside, that was really rude, and not needed at all TBH. You on the other hand, very good video mate, and well put together. Nice easy listening, and you explained all your points very clearly. New sub. Would love to see more BL3 content in the future on your channel. Thank you, appreciate it. Bro wrote a video essay on why he hates friendship. Listen man, if you didn't like the two times where Locke 
That's his name, that's who I've been playing with, no relation. Called me dickhead? Then you're not gonna like the other hundred times he called me dickhead. But that's okay because I call him asshole a hundred more times. You've been studying psychology for 15 years, I've been friends with this man for almost as long and there's no sign of that going away. We're gonna keep insulting each other, we're gonna keep gaslighting each other, because that's the beauty of having someone you're comfortable with. The one thing I disagree one is no DLC characters. The reason people wanted DLC characters for Borderlands 3 is because of the old examples. I mean, we got Krieg. That's one way to spell it. We got Jack's body double. Most, if not all, of the DLC characters were well written. And fun as shit to play. And honestly, the BL3 characters were just kind of boring. The reason they got those stats of people sticking to one character is, well, what was the point of playing the other characters? They nearly all played the same. The DLC characters are great because of their personalities and playstyles. I agree. Why aren't my fingers in someone's eye sockets right now? But I see it as less of a problem with needing DLC characters, and more of a problem with the main Vault Hunters needing more to their personalities. The longer you play as them, the more you realize how one-dimensional they are. Amara used to be a celebrity, Moe's loves her Iron Bear mech, Flak loves to hunt, and Zane, he's perfect. Can you guess why? As for gameplay, they're far from similar. I already made a video disproving that. You're part of the problem with gaming today. Wrong your? Boycotting doesn't help the industry. It hurts it making it more difficult for new games to release well. Borderlands never had a jaw-dropping story. It was simply an amazing looter shooter sandbox, and it's been that way since the original. Borderlands 3 absolutely nails that gameplay. It's actually kind of difficult to play an older Borderlands game because of the enjoyable new gimmicks. If boycotting makes it difficult for new games to release, good. I'm all for it. What do you gain from that? I get comments telling me how bad the game was on its first year. Can't relate because I don't have FOMO. Fear of missing out? Especially not after Borderlands 3. I ain't reading the rest. But I noticed you said the story was average here, and then you said the story was bad here. So which is it? Did you have an epiphany and realized how bad the story was when you were writing all that mumbo jumbo? Most of it is Steen's fault. Tell me you have no idea how markets work without telling me you have no idea how markets work. I'ma be honest, I don't know much about this topic. I've just been regurgitating what everyone else said. All I heard was 70-30 split and jumped to the conclusion that Steam was being stingy. However, I have not supported Epic Games once in any of my videos. You gotta try out Tiny Tina's Wonderland. I would recommend Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Now you just have to do Tiny Tina's Wonderland. We need your opinion on Tiny Tina's Wonderland. After making these Borderlands 3 videos, I am completely burnt out on the Borderlands 3 gameplay. I may not do a Wonderlands video anytime soon, especially after I found out that Wonderlands is just more Borderlands 3. It may not get this big of a treatment like my Borderlands 3 videos, considering how little even Gearbox bothered working on Wonderlands after its release. I hear all the DLCs are pretty bad and not one of them have a positive rating. Bounty of Blood's narrator is literally introduced the second or third mission to you at the end of the mission. Who? You mean this guy? That's not the fucking narrator. They don't have the same voice actor. They don't even have the same voice. Don't, huh? You know, it's the damnedest thing. Butcher Rose was making me play this melody to the stone over and over. Don't really know why. It's about a town. A little scrap of barely anything holding on for dear life on a rock named Gehenna. Gearbox put the whole... There is something actually wrong with you. Alright, that's enough comments. I'm gonna go read a book or something. I feel like I'm getting stupider.